What's up Node.js developers? In this tutorial, you're gonna learn how to work with dates in React Native by building a digital clock. And if you want to follow along this tutorial, make sure to download the starter project and also the guide that I have prepared for you following the link in the description below. And without further ado, let's jump into coding. The idea is that at this moment, the time that we're displaying here is hard-coded here in our display, so it doesn't actually show the proper time and the date. So for that, let's go ahead and first of all, install days.js in our project. For that, let's open at the, the terminal. And here, let's go ahead and write npx expo install days.js. You have like this command here. It's not days, it's day. Let's do day.js. All right, it was installed successfully. And the next step is to use this day.js uh, in our application. So first of all, let's import day.js here like this. And where we're displaying, for example, the time, let's go ahead and uh, add curly brackets instead of that text in order to be able to access like JavaScript and for example, this days.js. And let's call this days.js in order to get the current date and time. It's not gonna display anything because uh, day.js doesn't return a string, it returns uh, a date object. So we can do like, I don't know, to ISO string something like that just to see it. So right away we see that that's quite a lot of uh, things there. But what we can do with this day.js library and why I like it in comparison with the JavaScript date library, like the JavaScript date object is that we can format and it's very easy to, uh, uh, to format dates in the way you actually need it. So for example, for this one, the format will be, uh, we need to display hour and minute. So for the hour is HH, then double dots MM for the minute. So this will display the current date. As we can see, it's uh, correct. If you want to display the seconds, you can do SS here. Check out their documentation for more information about how you can format. Now for the date, we're gonna do the same basically, but we're gonna format it a bit differently. So let's copy this from here. Let's put it here and let's uh, format this date to display the name of the day of the week. And the name of the day of the week is gonna be for this, D, 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 then we have comma, save, we see already Friday, then we have D, D for the day of a month, and we have M, 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 M for the name of a month. So again, like I don't remember these things, you don't have to remember them, you can go ahead and look in the documentation and uh, to see like what all of these stand for and knowing them, then you can mix them to display dates in the way you uh, actually want. For example, if I do just MM, this is gonna display the month, but in uh, with numbers. But what we're interested in is in this uh, Friday, 30th September. All right, that's good. But uh, the problem is that we're displaying this time when we're opening the application. Now, if I'm gonna wait, and actually I already waited a couple of minutes and I see that the current time is uh, 1553, but it still displays 52 in the application. So if I'm gonna restart the application, yeah, it's gonna display 53 because it will take the current date when the application is rendered. But that's not what we actually want to do and that's not how a clock works. A clock should automatically update like every second and display the most up-to-date like time. So for that, we're gonna do, have to do uh, a couple of changes in order to always update this timer. How we can do that, uh, we have it here. I'm gonna explain it every, every single step. So instead of uh, taking the date, like the current date inside the rendering part, we're gonna save it into a state variable because a state variable we can update and whenever a state variable updates, our user interface, our UI is re-rendered to reflect the changes in the state. So this way we can have a state variable for the current time and for that we're gonna need the use state hook from React. Now, in our inside our application, before we are returning here, let's go ahead and define uh, the state for our date, set date for the setter equal use state. Now, whenever we're working with use date, we can provide a default value here. So what's gonna be the default value? Well, it's gonna be the days.js that gives us the current date, right? 
Now let's go ahead and take this date, our state variable called date, and let's replace in uh, where we are rendering here instead of days.js, let's do date.format and the same here date.format. We didn't solve the problem, this is only the first step, but the good thing is that our date is being taken from the state and whenever the state variable will change, our UI will re-render and it will um, reflect the changes of our date. Now, how do we update the date in our state? Well, we can have a function that is being triggered like every second or if we're only displaying minutes, it can also be triggered every minute and every minute it will update the state variable and then the state variable, as I said, will update the UI. To have like this uh, repeatable function that runs at every, like at specific intervals, like every minute, every second, and so on, there is a function in JavaScript called um, set interval. And set interval will help us to do that. But we also need to import the use effect hook because we need to start this function. We need to initiate the interval when the component mounts. So using a use effect, we can provide here a function. And after the function, if we provide an empty dependency array, this use effect will be called when we start the component. Now we can use the set interval here that I was talking about. Set interval expects two things a callback function and then the number of milliseconds that will define our interval, like how often should we run the function that we are sending here. The function, we're gonna define it here. And for the second parameter of the set interval, we need number of milliseconds. So one second, that's uh, 1000 milliseconds. So if we send 1000, that's gonna be one second. And then we can multiply it by, for example, 10, that's gonna be 10 seconds or uh, 60, that's gonna be one minute. But I'm gonna do multiply by one just to see that this is one second. Now, what should we do every second? Every second, we should update this date state variable to reflect the current date. So we're gonna use this setter, set date, in our interval set date and the value that we're gonna send is gonna be this days.js. And whenever we call this days.js, it returns us the most like current time. So by doing that, we update the date state every single second. And in order to be able to, uh, to see that in our user interface, let's go ahead and where we're displaying the time, let's also display the seconds. And this will actually be, will help us to visualize and see if it's actually working. All right. Here we have it, it updates every single second. So to, re to recap what uh, is happening here, we are using a state variable for the current date and based on that current date, we are displaying it on the screen. Now we need a way to update that current date every single, like based on some interval, like every second or every 10 seconds or every minute. For that, we're using a set interval function that helps us run a callback function every X amount of time, every X amount of second, milliseconds. So every second here, we are setting the date and updating it with the most current date. And we are initializing this uh, set interval when we first render the application component because we it is inside this use effect. The last thing here is uh, to avoid memory leaks. Every time we set an interval, we should also make sure to remove it, to unset it. Because if we leave our this component application, then we don't want this interval to still keep running. Because if it still keeps running, that's a memory leak and that's not good for your application. So the way we can reset it, our set interval will give us back the actual object for the interval. So we can say interval equal to set interval. And in a use effect, if we return a function, this function is going to be called when the component unmounts. So this is where we clean up the component and clean up things that we initialize here. And to clean up, there is a uh, global function that is automatically available clear interval. And we're gonna send this interval here. Just by doing that, we make sure that every time our application and mounts, we are actually stopping this function to repeat and to, to run again and again. Now that we see that everything is working, we can remove the seconds from here because I don't need them. I can save and we can set like here, like run this interval every second, basically 1000 milliseconds multiplied by 60 seconds in a minute. So run this every minute, not second. All right, so with that being said, I think that's everything 
when it comes to working with this JS and to, um, to display the current date and time on the screen using custom formatting. All right, now you know how to work with DayJS library in order to manage dates and time in React Native. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to subscribe to the channel not to miss our future tutorials. And now go out and check the next uh, episode in this series to learn more about animations with Reanimated 2. And if you missed our first video in this series where we build the UI, you can check it out here somewhere. All right, bye.